Namaste. I'm Jill Loftus of New It Astrology, and I'd like to welcome you to this video, which is about how are yoga and astrology connected. So some of you know my story and some of you don't, but how I came to astrology was through the practice of yoga. And I know a lot of people think that the practice of yoga is just, you know, wearing tight clothes and stretching on a sticky mat, but that is not true. Um, the word yoga means union, and it's actually traditionally uh, practiced as an eight limbed system, Ashtanga. Now you might know Ashtanga yoga as a certain form of yoga that was very vigorous, but truly all yoga is Ashtanga yoga um, using all eight limbs. And think of them as the spokes of a wheel, like the hub in the center. And so you have these eight limbs that come out from it. They're not practiced sequentially, of course, though you start sequentially um, and work your way up, but they're practiced simultaneously. It's not like you achieve one level and then you let those practices go. Um, you keep absorbing those practices as you continue along your path, all right? The eight limbs are yama, niyama, asana, pranayama, pratyahara, dharana, dhyana, and samadhi, all right? So yama means control, all right? It is the exercise of specific um, kind of limitations or restrictions. And there are five of those, and we'll talk about those later. And then niyama, things that you don't limit, you don't restrict, you do not control, you cultivate, okay? And there are five of those as well. Then asana or asan means pose. They're the yoga poses. That's why if you've ever heard trikonasana, shavasana, everything ends with asana because it means pose. Okay, so the, the purpose of those is to, um, you know, keep the body healthy so that you can meditate and, and so that you're not in pain, all right? Um, and you can sit comfortably to meditate. And then prana, yama, prana meaning life force, yama meaning control, the control of your life force, right? Which can include breath work practices, mantra, specific concentration techniques, the use of yantras, etc. Okay, and those are considered the outer limbs of yoga. And then you get to the inner limbs of yoga, with the first one is pratyahara, um, which is the withdrawing of the senses from the outer world and in. So it's closing down the gates, the gates of the ears, the eyes, the senses of the skin, the touch, the taste, pulling inward, away from that. And then there is dharana, concentration of the mind, effortful focus of the mind, bringing the mind back, right? Have you ever noticed the mind like, you know, wanders around, I always joke, it's kind of like a puppy, it, you know, unless it's trained to sit quietly next to you, it's gonna dig holes and pee on things, okay? That, this is the mind, right? So you have to train the mind to concentrate. And, concentration, concentration, continually bringing it back, learning to focus on one thing. And then that effortlessly flows into dhyana, which is meditation, um, the effortless stilling of the mind. And then after you've worked with that practice for a while, then you achieve this glimpse of bliss called samadhi, all right? And it's when the mind stops. Okay, there is there's no beginning, there's no end, there's no concentration, there's no object that you're meditating on. It's a flash of peace and bliss. And actually, the part of one of the best secular descriptions of Samadhi that I've ever heard is um, by a brain scientist named Jill Bolte Taylor. You can look her up. She did a TED Talk on having a stroke. And because she was a brain scientist, she knew what was happening to her brain and certain parts of the brain were shutting off part of the brain that shut off was the part that thinks you are this limited being. And she talks about feeling expansive and one with the universe. Um, she had a samadhi experience. And so, you know, most of us, um, even though that is the ultimate in yoga, most of us do not achieve or stay there. We might get glimpses of samadhi, right? Glimpses of pure bliss where the mind completely stops. Um, so. so this is the framework that I began with and the per one of the purposes um, of knowing astrology, according to Kriya Yoga, which is the system that I practice, is to understand the map of your karma. It's kind of like getting, you know, you get a car and it comes with a manual, <laughs> right? And you're like, oh, there's a light came on or, you know, whatever. Oh, what's the best gas to put in this? Okay. That's what your astrological chart is. It's like a map. It's a map of your karma. It's a law, the laws of timing. It's the tendencies. It's not set in stone, right? You, it, you are given this, um, this set of tendencies, this set of experiences, this set of, um, you know, the way you think, the way you love, you're the essence of who you are, you know, um, the luck or not luck that you have. And then you create a life out of that, right? You create a life out of that. 
But one of the things that it really does help soften your karma, um, which is one of the goals of yoga, because um, this helps to create less negative experiences with other people, less negative experiences with yourself, so that you can really focus on what you're here to learn, but also on your relationship with the divine, right? And your understanding and acknowledgement of yourself as a spiritual being, all right? So that is one of the great purposes behind um, the union of astrology and yoga. And of course, yoga includes many, many other things. I mean, not just astrology, but astronomy. Um, lots of different, um, you know, not just esoteric sciences, but just basic sciences, like, you know, how to prepare good food and things like that, the things that you need, right? Um, Goswami Kriyananda, uh, my primary teacher, used to say, yoga is a system for solving human problems. And don't we have a few, right? <laughs> so, um, I would say yoga is a system for solving human problems, yes, and astrology is a system for understanding, as Shelley Trimmer said, and that was Kriyananda's teacher, how the soul, or how the spirit formulated the soul. All right. Well, I hope that was useful, helpful. Um, if you'd like more information on the eight limbs, there's a great uh, section on it in Goswami Kriyananda's book, The Spiritual Science of Kriya Yoga. If you'd like to dig more into the yamas and niyamas, I recommend Deborah Adele's book, The Yamas and Niyamas. It's a great little volume that you can use to um, just research those different esoteric practices. Um, they will get a video all there themselves. Um, the yamas and niyamas are really life-changing, um, basically moral codes that really help you to understand how to, um, to move more gently through this life. All right, well, namaste, G. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time. Bye.